In this video on the standard normal distribution, we learn how to find an unknown standard deviation as well as an unknown mean when working with a normal distribution. And for that, we're going to work through the two examples you see on the screen here. And the idea for both of these examples, and for any other example like it, is that an unknown standard deviation as well as an unknown mean can be found with a three step method. So let's get started to learn that method. In example one, we're told the heights capital X of the adult male population in France follows a normal distribution with mean mu, which equals to 175 centimeters, and standard deviation sigma. We're then told, given that 89.4% of the adult male population measures less than 185 centimeters, find sigma, the standard deviation. Okay, now before I write down my three step method, upon reading a question like this one, what I always do is make a note of which of the two parameters I have, that is, which of the mean or the standard deviation to me is given, and in this case we're given the mean mu which equals to 175 centimeters, and the unknown parameter is the standard deviation sigma, and I also make a note of the value of the measure or observation that we have, as well as the area under the bell curve it corresponds to. And here's what I mean, in this last sentence here, we're told that 89.4% of the adult male population measures less than 185 centimeters. Now, 185 centimeters corresponds to an observation, in other words, a value of x, and 89.4%, well, that will correspond to an area under the bell curve for this normal distribution. And so now that I've made a note of those things, I move on to my three step method. And the first step, step one, consists of illustrating the information that's given in the question with the bell curve, and of writing down the z-score or z-value equation. And so I'll quickly write illustrate, illustrate, and z-score equation. Okay, well to illustrate this, since x is normally distributed with a mean of 175, I can quickly illustrate that with a very generic bell curve, something looking like this. There we go, that'll do. And its mean value, well, that's right in the middle, right there, is mu, which equals to 175 centimeters. There we go, and that's my x axis there. Next on this bell curve, I illustrate the information that's given to us, which remember was that 89.4% of the population measures less than 185 centimeters. And in fact, the word less is quite important there, so I'll underline that as well. Now, on my x axis here, 185 would be roughly here, I'll say. So that's 185. And so the area under this bell curve, which corresponds to this 89.4%, would be the area to the left of that value, which is the area I'm shading right now. There we go. So that area is 89.4%, which we could also write as a decimal as 0 0.894. Okay, so that's everything illustrated. And so now that that's done, we need to establish the z-score equation, or I could say z-value equation. Here's the idea. When dealing with a normal distribution with an unknown mean or an unknown standard deviation, we'll always transform our bell curve into the standard normal bell curve, and we'll use the z-score that corresponds to the x-value given in the question. So in this case, that x-value would be 185. And here's how that works. When we transform this normal distribution into the standard normal distribution, we're transforming the bell curve we see there into this one. We have a bell curve which is centered at the origin, so this would be the vertical axis right here, for which the mean value is zero and the standard deviation is equal to one. And I should say the horizontal axis in this case is z. And now the idea is, under the standard normal bell curve, we're going to be working with the area that corresponds to the green area we have here. And so if I say that the z value which corresponds to 185 is somewhere here, and I'll just write z for now, then the area under the standard normal bell curve would be this blue area right here, which is also equal to 89.4%, or 0 0.894. Okay, now what's important to remember is that to get from this bell curve to the standard normal bell curve, we transform our variable x into the variable z using the formula z equals to x minus mu, 
over sigma. And I'll go ahead and box that formula. Do make a note of it. And in fact, I'll illustrate that between the two bell curves with an arrow here. We transform this bell curve into the standard normal bell curve using this formula. And for any x value we have here, to obtain its corresponding z score or z value, we replace the x inside our formula by the value of x, the mean by the mean of our distribution, so that would be 175, and the standard deviation in this formula is the one that we're trying to find. And so the z score equation we write down at the end of step one is the one that connects the x value we have, so 185, to its corresponding z score on the standard normal distribution curve. And so that would look something like this. We'd write that z, or z, is equal to x minus mu, so that's going to be 185 minus 175, and I'll just write that out, that's 185 minus 175, over the standard deviation sigma. So all of that's written over sigma. Now, since 185 minus 175 is 10, this quickly turns into z equals to 10 over sigma. And that's step one done. Using the z-score or z-value formula, we now have an equation involving the unknown sigma we're after, as well as the z-score or z-value we're about to find in step two. And so I move on to step two. And now in step two, since we know that the blue area on this standard normal bell curve is 89.4% or 0 0.894, and since the standard normal curve has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, we have everything we need to use the inverse normal function on our calculator to find this z value. And so I'll write use inverse norm or inverse normal to find z. And so for that, I move over to my calculator and I'm using the TI Inspire CX, but regardless of the calculator you use, the method will be similar. And so to get to the inverse normal here, I click on menu, followed by the fifth option probability, followed by the fifth option distributions, followed by the third option inverse normal, and I click on that. I'm now prompted to enter an area, and the area is the blue area we have here, the 0 0.894, and so I type that, that 0 0.894. I'm then asked for a mean, which by default is set as zero, which is perfect, and I'm asked for a standard deviation, which again by default is set as one which is perfect as well as it corresponds to the standard normal bell curve. So I'm happy with all of that and I click on OK. And we're done. Rounding what I see on the calculator screen to three significant figures, in an exam we could go ahead and write that z is equal to inverse norm, I open up a pair of parentheses, 0 0.894, which corresponds to the blue area, with mean 0 and standard deviation 1, and that leads us to z equals to 1.25. And that's step two done. We now know the z-score or z-value corresponding to 185 centimeters. Finally, I move on to step three. And in step three, we use the result we just found to solve the equation we wrote at the end of step one. And so I'll write use z-score, or I'll just write use z, to solve equation found in step one. Okay, well, copying the equation we had here, that was z equals to 10 over sigma, and now replacing z by 1.25, this turns into, and I'll carry on with my working right here, 1.25 equals to 10 over sigma. I now multiply both sides of this equation by sigma, which turns it to 1.25 sigma equals to 10, and finally dividing both sides of this equation by 1.25 leads us to sigma equals to 10 over 1.25. And using our calculator if needs be, we can quickly calculate 10 divided by 1.25, and we see that it's equal to 8. And so we can write our final answer as sigma equals to 8. And we're done. Those three steps will always work when looking for an unknown mean or an unknown standard deviation. And to illustrate that further, let's go ahead and use the same three steps to work through example two. 
Now in example 2 we're told that the time taken capital X to run 1 kilometer in seconds follows a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma which equals to 40 seconds. Given that the probability that a randomly selected runner takes more than 440 seconds is 2.28%, find the mean mu. Okay, well once more what I always do is I make a note of any parameter that's given, so in this case it's sigma, the standard deviation, and so we need to find the mean. Remember, I also make a note of any value of x that's given to us, as well as its corresponding area, and in this case we're told that the probability that a random selected runner takes more than, and that's important, 440 seconds, is 2.28%. And so now that I've made a note of all of that, I can go ahead and start my three-step method. And let me just draw a vertical line to separate example one from example two, and I'll leave the formula right in the middle, because we'll need it here as well. There we go. Okay, well again, our three-step method. Step one, we illustrate all the information that's given to us. And so once more, I can start with the bell curve here. I'll draw a very generic bell curve. There we go. And we don't know what the mean is in this case, so I'll just write mu in the middle here. And we're given a probability, and that is the probability that a runner takes more than 440 seconds is 2.28%. And here the words more and than tell us that we're dealing with the right-hand side of the bell curve. And 2.28%, well, since 50% would represent exactly half of the bell curve, 2.28% would be the small area that I'm shading right now. There we go. That's 2.28%, which I could also write as 0 0.0228. And of course, I should write that that corresponds to an x value of 440. There we go. Okay, and just as I did before, alongside that, I'm going to draw the standard normal bell curve. So looking something like this. There we go, which is centered at the origin right here, and the horizontal axis here is the z-axis. The mean mu is equal to zero, and the standard deviation is one. And just as we did for example one, to establish the z-score equation we're going to use, I always illustrate where that z-score would be under the standard normal bell curve. And so I'll go ahead and say that we're after this z-value right there, and that the corresponding area under the standard bell curve is this blue area here. So that's 2.28%. Okay, now once more, to get from this bell curve to the standard normal bell curve, we do so by transforming x into z using this formula. And so copying this formula but replacing x by 440 and the standard deviation by 40, it turns into z equals to 440 minus the mean mu, which we need to find, over the standard deviation, 40. And that's step one taken care of. And so we now move on to step two. Remember, in step two we use the inverse normal to find z. In other words, we need to use the inverse normal to find this z value right here under our standard normal bell curve. But when using the inverse normal function on our calculator, it's very important to remember that the area that we give the function has to be a left-hand side area. In other words, it has to be a left tail under the bell curve. And the blue area that we have here is a right tail. And so to use the inverse normal to find this z value, rather than working with this blue area, we'll be working with this gray area that I'm shading in right now, which corresponds to the complement area. And since the total area under the bell curve is equal to one, the gray area we have here will be equal to one minus the blue area. And the blue area, well, that's 2.28%, which is the same thing as 0 0.0228. And of course, to be safe, we could calculate that on our calculator. One minus 0 0.0228 is equal to, and I'll just write equals to, 0 0.9772. Okay, now that we have that gray area, we're ready to use the inverse normal function. And so remember, on our calculator, to do that, I click on Menu, followed by Probability, followed by Distributions, followed by Inverse Normal. Now I enter the area, so that's the gray area we just found. Remember, it has to be a left tail area. So that's 0 0.9772. The mean is 0, and the standard deviation is 1. And so I'm happy with all of that, and so I click on OK. Done. 
and now rounding what I see on the calculator screen to three significant figures, on my exam paper I would write z equals to inverse norm, so inv norm, of 0 0.9772 with mean 0 and standard deviation 1, which leads to a z value of 2.00. And that's step 2 done. So I move on to the third and final step, step 3, in which I go back to the equation we wrote at the end of step 1, and I replace the z that I see by the value we just found. So let's see, copying what we had at the end of step 1, we had z equals to 440 minus mu over 40. And now replacing z by the 2 we just found, this turns into 2 equals to 440 minus mu over 40. I now multiply both sides of this equation by 40, and so the left-hand side turns into 2 times 40, which is 80, and on the right-hand side we'll have 440 minus mu. We're nearly there. I now subtract 440 from both sides of this equation, which leads to 80 minus 440 on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side we'll be left with negative mu, and since 80 minus 440 is equal to negative 360, this turns into negative 360 equals to negative mu. And I'll just draw an arrow showing that I carry on my working up here. Finally, since the opposite of mu is equal to the opposite of 360, we can state without any further justification that mu must equal to the opposite of negative 360, which is 360. And we're done. We've now found the unknown mean mu. And that is the mean time taken to run one kilometer. And there we have it. This three-step method can always be used to find an unknown standard deviation as well as an unknown mean. And that's it for this tutorial.